everyone, Dr. Shea here from The Dentalist. Today, we're diving into one of the most important topics in dental material science, base metal casting alloys. These alloys are widely used in dentistry for making crowns, bridges, removable partial dentures, and implant supported prosthesis. Understanding their properties, composition, and applications is crucial because these materials form the backbone of modern prosthodontics and restorative dentistry. But here's the real question. Why do we even need base metal alloys when we already have noble alloys like gold and platinum? What makes them different? And when should we actually choose them? Stick around because we're going to unpack everything in detail. We'll cover their composition, mechanical properties, their clinical correlation and applications, and even common challenges dentists face while working with them. Let's get started. Before we get into technical details, let's first define what base metal casting alloys are. These are metal alloys that contain less than 25% noble metals. Unlike gold-based alloys, which are expensive and relatively soft, base metal alloys are stronger, more corrosion resistant, and cost effective. So what makes these alloys special? Well, they exhibit high strength and hardness, making them suitable for thin but durable restorations, good corrosion resistance, um, which is essential for long-term oral use. And then it has lightweight properties. They are significantly lighter than gold-based alloys. The most common base metal alloys used in dentistry include cobalt chromium alloys, which are used in removable partial dentures. And then there's nickel chromium alloys, commonly used for crowns and bridges. Then we have titanium and titanium alloys uh, preferred for implants due to their biocompatibility. Each of these alloys has unique properties that influence their clinical applications. Let's break them down further. Before we move forward, I have prepared a quiz for this topic, especially for you guys. So just make sure that you find the link in the description below and take that quiz. It will really help you guys understand this topic. Anyway, um, coming back to the composition properties of base metal alloys. Let's take a closer look at the composition of these alloys. Each element in a base metal alloy plays a specific role in determining its final properties. Let's talk about cobalt chromium alloys first. It has cobalt, which provides high strength and hardness, and then it has chromium, which forms a protective oxide layer, improving corrosion resistance, and then it has molybdenum, which enhances hardness and wear resistance. Why is cobalt chromium used for uh, removable partial denture frameworks? Have you ever thought about it? Well, it's because it's lightweight, rigid, and resistant to corrosion. It provides excellent strength without excessive bulk, making it ideal for delicate yet strong frameworks. And then we have nickel chromium alloys, which contains nickel um, it improves ductility and malleability of the alloy. And then we have chromium, which provides corrosion resistance, of course. And then we have beryllium, which enhances castability by lowering the melting temperature. But have you ever thought about why nickel chromium is preferred for PFM crowns and bridges? It's because it has high strength and excellent bonding with porcelain, making it ideal for porcelain fused to metal restorations. However, it has a drawback. Some patients may be allergic to nickel, so always consider alternative materials in such cases. The next alloy we have is titanium and titanium alloys, um, which obviously contains titanium that offers biocompatibility, corrosion resistance, and lightweight along with good strength. And then it has aluminium and vanadium, which enhances mechanical properties and osseo integration. Why is titanium used for implants, you may ask? What do you think? Well, titanium is one of the few metals that fuses directly with the bone, 
and that helps with osseointegration, making it the gold standard for dental implants. Now let's talk about the casting process for base metal alloys. Base metal alloys require a special casting process because of their high melting temperatures compared to gold alloys. Let's go step by step so that you can understand better. When we start the step by step casting process, it starts with the wax pattern fabrication, which is a precise wax model of the restoration that is to be created. And then we do the investing. The wax pattern is then embedded in a mold material, which is the investment material. Then the wax is burnt out. The wax is heated and eliminated, leaving a cavity in the mold, which is called the burnout phase. The next step is melting the alloy. The metal alloy is melted using a torch or induction casting machine. Then the next step is casting. The molten metal is forced into the mold using centrifugal or vacuum casting. Then comes cooling and divesting. The casting is cooled and removed from the mold. Finishing and polishing would be the last stage and in which any rough surfaces are smoothed and the final restoration is polished for clinical use. Why is this process challenging? What do you think? Well, it's because base metal alloys have a higher fusion temperature, which makes casting technically demanding. Special high heat investment materials are required. Improper casting can lead to porosity, incomplete casting, or rough surfaces. Now let's talk about the common casting defects in base metal alloys. Despite precise techniques, casting defects can occur. We'll go through some of the most common ones, okay? So the first one is porosity, which is tiny holes in the casting due to gas entrapment. The solution to it is to use proper degassing techniques and controlled cooling. Then the next problem that we could face during casting is incomplete casting, in which the metal fails to fill the mold completely. And the solution is to ensure adequate metal temperature and proper sprue design. I have made a separate video on lost wax technique. I'll leave a link down somewhere below and you can just understand how the lost wax technique works. If you understand that, then all of these casting defects and effects would be more clear to you. So make sure you go through that video. Okay, so the third casting defect is rough surface, which is a grainy or pitted appearance of the cast uh, restoration. The solution is to use high quality investment material and controlled burnout. Then the last uh, casting effect that we'll talk about is fins and spines. Unwanted thin metal projections on the casting is called fins and spines. So the solution is to handle the mold carefully to avoid cracks during expansion. Understanding these defects and how to prevent them ensures better restorations and minimizes laboratory mistakes. If you want more detail on the casting defects, comment down below and I'll make a separate video in detail about all the casting effects and defects. To summarize, base metal casting alloys are a game changer in restorative dentistry. They offer strength, durability, and cost effectiveness, making them a vital part of modern prosthodontics and restorative dentistry. In today's video, we covered what base metal alloys are and why they're important, the different types of base metal alloys and their composition, and how base metal alloys are cast and why they require special techniques, common casting defects, and how to avoid them. I hope you'll take advantage of the dental board exam style quiz that I have specially prepared for you regarding base metal alloys. Link is in the description. Understanding these concepts is key to mastering dental material science. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and drop a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down as well. See you in the next one. Take care till we meet again.